streaming live on WFLA Now, powered by 1-800-ASK-GARY. Here is J.B. Buno. A confrontation with protesters that gives us some answers from the sister of Brian Laundrie. Cassie Laundrie emerging from her home to set the record straight on her brother, on her parents, her own words, and the attorney that she says threw her under the bus. Hey there, folks. J.B. Buno here with you live on WFLA Now. Great to have uh, the eight on your side team here with us together here on stream. You've been seeing them here separate on streams over the last several weeks, but great to have together here eight on your side investigators, Masa Saidi and Walt Buteau. You see the hashtags here all around the screen. We're going to start to bring your comments here into the Facebook Live, YouTube Live, all those comments. We're going to bring them here on screen from those social media comment sections. If you use hashtag HJB, hashtag HeyMasa, or hashtag HeyWalt here, we're going to play back some portions of the video here, some portions of the confrontation that occurred here yesterday at Lakewood Ranch here in Florida between protesters and of course, Cassie Laundrie and her husband here. But let's first get some new details here from uh, Josh Benson, who has been talking to attorney Stephen Bertolino here on Twitter. Uh, this is a screenshot here from Josh's phone. Josh, who you'll see tonight, everybody on our newscast here on WFLA News Channel 8. And I will read this here as follows. Josh asking this question here. You can see there the timestamp today at 1243 uh, Eastern Time, saying, can you please send me the explainer about the flight Brian took. Thanks. And then from Stephen Bertolino. Brian flew home to Tampa from SLC, Salt Lake City, on August 17th and returned to Salt Lake City on August 23rd to rejoin Gabby. To my knowledge, Brian and Gabby paid for the flights as they were sharing expenses. Brian flew home to obtain some items and empty and close the storage unit to save money as they contemplated extending the road trip. Again, this is from Josh Benson on Twitter. Josh, who's been in contact with attorney Stephen Bertolino, who, of course, represents uh, Brian Laundry here. Let's just start here with, the, with your initial reaction, Masa and Walt here. Masa, starting here with you. Uh, this is now new. The timeline here is getting filled in by the day. The timeline is indeed getting filled in by the day. The first I heard that Brian uh, had returned uh, from the trip left Gabby was during that video where Cassie Laundry and her husband were confronted outside of their home with their children inside the home. They were confronted by protesters. And in that, I did a rough log of that roughly 20-minute excerpts that were released by protesters to News Nation. And uh, the protesters asked, Brian flew back on the 17th. The dad paid for the ticket. And the sister said that she saw him on the trip. She confirmed that Brian flew back on the 17th, as the lawyer has now also confirmed as well. And she said that there was no sign of trouble. In fact, Cassie Laundrie said that during Brian's short trip home from Salt Lake City, that she FaceTimed with Gabby and Brian was acting normal, just talking about where they had been and where they were going. Walt, what do you think? Well, you know, this sort of supports the rumor that we had heard way back in the beginning about the f we had heard Brian flew home, emptied a storage unit. In fact, I got a lot of questions about that that we could neither confirm nor, nor deny. We didn't have any information. This confirms that. I think it's also interesting, though, uh, from Cassie, um, why wouldn't you ask her if we had the opportunity to ask her? No, no, um, no reflection on what happened on the 12th of August. Uh, the, did neither Brian nor Gabby share what had happened, their fight that was actually recorded? We didn't see that until about a month later, but still no reflection on that difficulty by either one of these, uh, the 22-year-old and the 23-year-old. At uh, least none that we know of, right? Right, and uh, I'm just reading some of the hashtag KJB, hashtag hey Walt, hashtag hey Masa, questions and comments that are coming in here. But I, I just want to point this out here for our viewers. Again, Brian Laundrie, Gabby Petito on a cross-country road trip. They get to uh, you know Utah, Wyoming, that area of the country where, of course, near the area where the Moab incident occurred here. And Brian flies home solo on the 17th Back to Tampa for six days. Do I have that right there? Is that is that that's six total days six or there? Seven days. That's six a long six. period of time to just to leave a cross country road trip, go back home for some time. Your fiance is still there. 
and then you fly back, Masa. That's just, again, it just all seems like the timeline is getting filled in here, but it's not really answering all that many questions, or at least the questions that are most important. I think what this new information does is it just, again, it... As, as the days have gone by, we have gotten more and more information as more and more people come, have come forward, as you know, some family members have talked, as we've gotten access to some records, we are just getting a more clear picture of, uh, frankly, Gabby's last days and weeks alive. So I don't take any, uh, I just take this at you know, face value. He flew home. Apparently, there was a storage unit. The sister says, the protesters asked, did you know, where's the storage unit? Where's the storage unit? She said, I don't know where the storage unit is, but she said that they had a storage locker. And she said that she was not sure where it was. So this is, uh, you know, news, news to us that he had come back. And apparently, the attorney saying that Brian and Gabby paid for that trip. So... I, I can't. And I'd like to. It. I'd like to point it out too that it's really not all that uncommon, especially in Florida, where there aren't many basements. Basements are just right. not something that you find in homes here. So it's very common for people to have storage units. Um, and fact, and they were living with the parents, right? Uh, you know, back to the timeline. This is also keep in mind the twenty third. He gets back in the twenty third. We don't know which day, but four days later is the last time that uh, Gabby's mother heard from her daughter in a text message that she thought was quote odd. That was the, the text text message about Stan, the grandfather. And it's also the last day the eyewitnesses saw them at the, uh, at the uh, Tex-Mex restaurant in Jackson, Wyoming. Again, on the 27th, when they're apparently having some sort of fight, where uh, Brian reportedly, according to this eyewitness, uh, got salty with a waitress. Um, so, and keep, it's just four days later that uh, that is that this sort of starts to unravel and then again the time of death would seem to be according to the the feds uh, sometime between the 27th and the 30th right could yes. he, it could have happened early on the 30th late on the 27th or sometime in between because that's when the credit card fraud charge they said it, it followed her death um, and that the cards were used on the 30th 31st and first and they were also asking to speak with witnesses and the spread Creek dispersed camping area from the 27th to the 30th as well. And my story tonight, um, I know that everyone who has been following this case very closely, you are familiar with the story of Hunter Manis. He ran into <coughs> Brian, he says, he thinks, um, at a bar in Montana. I talked with him at length and he told me uh, what the FBI had told him, uh, how that conversation went as he recounted how he thought he had ran into Brian Laundry, And again, that would be three days. If it was in fact Brian Laundry. that would be three days after he flew from Tampa back to Salt Lake City where that incident would have occurred. But he also tells me, well, that the FBI uh, talked with him for about 40 minutes and got his statement, but they haven't been in touch with him since. They might, they, obviously, they know more than they're telling us. Um, they, there might be something about that eyewitness account that didn't add up to other things they know, but we'll find that out at some point, uh, maybe days, maybe weeks down the road. Look for that story tonight from 8 on Your Side investigator Masa Saidi here on WFLA News Channel 8 and, of course, on WFLA.com. Speaking of WFLA.com, let me preface exactly how we're going to approach this next segment here, everybody, on WFLA now. The full video is out. The full video, of course, of this exchange between... Cassie Laundry, her husband, and protesters here uh, at the home in, in Lakewood Ranch. It's about roughly a 20-minute or so video. And again, you can find it right now on WFLA.com and the WFLA app. If you're joining us on Facebook, if you're joining us on YouTube, it's as simple as clicking on the link in the description on this video or in the pinned comment. It'll take you over to WFLA.com, the WFLA app, and you can watch it full for yourself here. But this, uh, this, this, uh, it's not it's not as much of an interview as it is a confrontation here where protesters uh, what we have here is a couple that is coming out of their home here thinking about their kids and you're going to hear it here for yourself Cassie Laundry here saying my kids are inside crying they have been crying here and they are just trying to bring some semblance of peace here to a situation here that has clearly just grown here uh, to an exorbitant magnitude. So the protesters here uh, are asking questions nonstop. Uh, they interject all the time here. It's really hard to hear what 
the conflicting audio here. They talk over each other. It's not a back and forth simple exchange here. It's very much here. Cassie Laundry trying to just play ball here and answer some questions and be transparent and be honest. And the protesters who were just firing question after question after question after question. So what we did was you can watch the full thing for yourself on WFLA.com, the full video here. But what we did is we took out some snippets here, some moments here that are of tremendous value here to us finding out more about the timeline, about what happened to Gabby Petito, about what happened with Brian Laundry on his trip home to Florida here. So we're going to play that back here for you, and we're going to stop it here in certain moments and have a conversation here with our audience. And yes, we are going to be featuring your hashtag HAB, hashtag HAWALT, hashtag HAMASA comments here. And we'll start here with this one here on screen from Vanamatix, hashtag HAB. Don't you find it weird that she says her parents are not even talking to her these are things that we're going to start to discuss here so file in your hashtag hey jb hashtag hey masa hashtag hey walt comments and questions here and we'll feature them here as we continue to listen in here so let's get right into this here you guys masa walt i'm going to keep you guys here on screen with myself and what we're going to do is we're going to now play back a portion here uh, of the video that we can and we can all kind of listen in here uh, to Cassie Laundry, her husband, uh, confronting protesters outside of the home here yesterday, uh, that being September, excuse me, not September, October 4th, 2021 here uh, in Lakewood Ranch. Let's take a listen. We have fully cooperated with the police since September 11th when they called. I did not say that I saw my brother. I said I haven't been able to speak to him in reference to the time when I was called by the police. Since that point, I haven't been able to speak to my brother. All right, so let's start here right there, Masa and Walt, mm -hmm. because this is Cassie clarifying the contextual error that was made in the GMA interview from last month here. Uh, the GMA interview that she did where Good Morning America reported, and ABC reported, that she hadn't seen Brian since Brian came home to Florida on September 1st. But that was something that, uh, again, if you, and if you watch it, and this is something that I pointed out on my WFLA JB Twitter account, this is something that was a contextual kind of misunderstanding here. There was a murkiness surrounding that question and that response that was uh, kind of misrelayed by Good Morning America here. And she's clearing the air here, Masa, about that particular point here. She says she hasn't seen Brian since the Fort DeSoto. Camp. We'll, we'll get more into that here, but she hasn't seen Brian. It was contextually kind of um, a mistake. So she talked about that right off the top. She also talked about it four minutes and 30 seconds into the confrontation with protesters um, outside. And the GMA package that I watched and the story that I have discussed here on WFLA now, um, the package, the reporter's package said that she hadn't spoken with Brian Laundry. So uh, people are throwing around that she hadn't seen him and what I have seen of GMA's reporting, GMA's reporter said that she hadn't spoken with her brother. And four minutes, 30 seconds in, Cassie clarified, and she claims that the transcript is out there from the full GMA interview. I have not pulled it. I'm sure many of your viewers uh, are probably doing that right as we speak. But um, Cassie says that the interviewer asked, what's the weirdest thing about this all? And then she answered in response to that question, what's the weirdest thing? She said, I haven't been able to speak with my brother. So she said that from the 11th forward, she was in Orlando on vacation, September 11th, when law enforcement contacted her, you know, she hadn't been able to speak with her brother from that point. So that is, uh, there was a lot of media bashing going on between the protesters uh, they were confronting Cassie Laundry and her husband towards the end where they were all just very mad at the media for this. So um, that's what I take it. So my main points here are that the GMA uh, interviewer said that she hadn't spoken, not that she hadn't seen, and that Cassie says that her comments were in response to a question about what's the weirdest thing about this. All right, let's continue playing here. Portions of this here. Walt Massa, you can tell me. I, I, I've got the play and pause here, so if you so want me to. One other point. It, yeah. This just goes to the dissecting of every syllable as, as we try to fill in all these blanks. I, can I ask a question of either of you? I, I'm not sure I understand the difference or the relevance of the two I spoke, I saw. What is the relevance? What are, what are we worried about? What, and I, I have perhaps not followed that criticism, as Masa pointed out. What is the relevance of the difference between those two things? 
Okay, Masa. should I answer? Okay. Yeah. So um, the relevance, and right now I'm kind of being an attorney when I when no, I the, the why I asked you. to yeah. that point. Yep. The relevance is that she saw Brian on September 1st, and that she saw Brian on September 6th. The GMA package said that she hadn't spoken to her brother. So then when the information came out that she had seen her brother, people were saying that she was lying. Right. And I was just being an attorney and saying, no, well, I she technically didn't say that she hadn't seen him. She said that she hadn't spoken to him. The GMA package that I watched said that, that she hadn't spoken to him. And now this new information, which we need to check out, a transcript to where the question from GMA was, what's the weirdest thing about this all? Not, have you seen your brother since he got back? To Northport and on I, September 1st. And I think that the overarching thing here is whether or not to believe Cassie Laundry. I, right. I think that that's what it really boils down right. to is whether or not. That's, and listen, I agree. I think now that we have a 20 minute clip here of her coming out of her home saying, I'm just trying to bring some ease to my household with my kids inside who are crying here. I think that there is a lot of folks here that are going <clears> to <throat> maybe now form an opinion as to whether or not they believe Cassie Laundry and her husband or whether or not they believe that there's something. Um, else at play here as far as uh, the laundry family here. So we're ready to, to continue playing here, ready to move on to the next portion? Sure. All right. What do you want us to do? We cooperate with the police. We're not supposed to talk to anybody, and you're making my children cry. Making my children cry. And this is why they came out of the home here. They were just trying to, again, these protesters being up and down the street here. They've had uh, bullhorns. They have, of course, uh, had had signs that, that show Brian Laundrie's face with murderer uh, in, in letters uh, going from left to right across it. And quite frankly, let, let's again stay rooted in fact here, folks. Gabby Petito's death is a homicide investigation. And he is not at this time, at least publicly from, as, you know, from the FBI, not a suspect uh, in her death. Of course, he is charged in a federal arrest warrant on the charge of use of unauthorized access devices. But these protesters have been uh, going up and down the street there uh, in Northport in front of the parents' home with this sign that says Brian Laundry murderer. And we just, again, that just speaks to um, them not really being rooted in fact here with this case. But again, the full video on WFLA.com. Anything you two have to want to add there? I think there? it speaks to the great impatience that this case uh, shows of our of, of, of the world right now that uh, we want it solved like a Law & Order episode and it just doesn't work that way. We're talking about multiple jurisdictions. Moss's story reflects, a, what, a third jurisdiction, right? Another place that the FBI had to go. I've gotten calls about him being up in Canada. I'm assuming those were checked out because those folks those folks said they called the FBI. We've, we've had, we had a, a report um, that I, I, I'm pretty sure is accurate uh, that we that uh, that he was spotted at a campground in southern Illinois where I used to work and I called some people there and they said they could not confirm or deny they had talked to the FBI which to me implies they talked to the FBI because they would have said no uh, and that that involved a gas station and again that per potential use of that device as in the debit card and we have Wyoming and multiple jurisdictions out there it's a complicated case it's simplified by the fact we get to see the beginning of this this journey with two people who appear to be in love and then we get to see this confrontation on the 12th and now the timeline gets filled in but the impatience is what this this says to me about everybody wants the answers now as opposed to letting law enforcement develop their case let's continue playing here this next question being posed here and this is the answer now was brian with you on september 1st did he come to this house she yes. came to this house with my parents in their mustang not the van i did not know that he took that van back i found out the next day with everybody else we are just as upset frustrated and heartbroken as everybody else and I am losing my parents and my brother and my ch children's aunt and my future sister-in-law on top of this and you're not helping and she ends there you're not and you're not helping so uh, again back to this question okay. here from uh from the protesters why was Brian with you on September 1st? Did he come to the house? And, and according to Cassie Laundry, yes, they were at this house in Lakewood Ranch uh, with the Ford Mustang. The Ford Mustang that, of course, uh, we've been talking about over the last several weeks here. Uh, Masa Walt, who wants to hop in here on, on this response here from, uh, from Cassie Laundry. Uh, yeah, I mean, she basically said that, um, that her parents uh, were planning on coming to the house anyway. They were going to surprise the children, that she didn't know that Brian was going to be there. And I think, again, people are more than likely reading into that. Um, how could you not have talked about 
Gabby at that point. I think a lot mm-hmm. of people probably want to know that. But I guess now from this timeline, um, we know by September 1st, according to the FBI, Gabby is dead by the 1st of September. And, um, and that Brian has allegedly, by the 1st of September, used a debit card that we can only presume is Gabby's. The FBI has not said that, but we presume it's Gabby's and has used it on three occasions to spend more than $1,000, which, by the way, that's just a level of a charge. It, it could be way more than $1,000. It could be 1100 It could be 2000 It could be 20000 whatever it could be. But we know that on the 1st, we now know that uh, that Gabby was no longer with us. I, I want to, again, remind our audience here, eight on your side, investigators, Masa Saidi, Walt Buto, J.B. Buno here with you live. Uh, you can use hashtag AJB, hashtag Masa, hashtag Walt. We will be featuring your, uh, your questions and your comments here uh, once we get through the snippets here of this video here. But here's, here's the thing. Brian flew home from Salt Lake City to Tampa, then goes back to to Gabby, uh, according to Stephen Bertolino and what we just found out here uh, at the top of the stream here. And then all of a sudden, he's back in Tampa on September 1st. So I would imagine that if you're Cassie Laundry here, you're thinking, wait, you, and she's almost making this face right, right now in the thumbnail, like, wait, weren't, weren't you, weren't, you, you just flew back. You, you just flew back to be with Gabby. You, you're, and you're back again. You, you're going, you're ping-ponging back and forth here between... Uh, Salt Lake City between Utah, Wyoming, and between Florida, you're, you're home again? Did, what happened? What happened? Where's Gabby? Why aren't you here with that, Gabby? That question, I mean, that question almost has to have been asked. asked. So um, are, you, are you referencing the trip when he came back for those I'm just days? Rep- I'm, I'm first, referencing the, the back first. and forth. Look, oh, on and the again, first, yeah. we don't like to make assumptions, and I don't, you don't, but, but I think the general public, they're allowed to make assumptions. They don't, have to, they don't have to follow any rules, and I think the general public is going to just assume that this, she said, uh, Cassie said, she misses her sister-in-law. She's lost her sister-in-law. She's lost her family. I, I assume there's, there's, a, um, there's a, a bit of a, a, a wedge between them now, it sounds like. So I think the general public probably feels, on the first, as, as uh, JB just pointed out, you didn't ask about um, Gabby? I mean, you'd think you would have. It's her business. She doesn't have to tell us, but it seems like that question would have come up. I just... Again, they're they're engaged to be married. They're on this cross country road trip. It's like, you know, it, whenever somebody comes over to my house and they're maybe without their husband or wife, be like, oh, hey, where where is this person? Where well, are they? Just, where on are the they tonight? Twenty seventh, you flew back. Um, no, I'm sorry, the twenty fourth, you flew back, um, and then you're twenty third. Twenty third, you flew. Twenty third, you flew back, and a week later. Less than a week later, you're starting your drive back to Tampa again, with the white ping, van without Gabby. Again, ping-ponging back and forth between what was supposed to be a cross-country road trip and then coming back to Florida on multiple occasions here mid-road trip. It just... It's interesting. It's interesting. Ready for the next clip? Aaron uh, and my bro- Masa? No, no. Go ahead. No, please. I, I was just going to say uh, a question that could come up is why is she not talking to her family right now? And at the towards the end of this 20-minute video thing that we received, she says that the lawyer told her parents not to talk with her. So I just thought that was relevant. In, in to another tell interview, um, I saw, I can't remember the outlet, but she said, I don't know where he is. And if I did, I, I'm paraphrasing. If I did, I'd turn him in. And I think perhaps that is part of this wedge, but we don't know. Let's get to the next portion here. This is the next question here that was asked. Why aren't the parents talking to you guys? Let's play this back here again. The next portion of this video, video, full interview, of course, or full confrontation here is on WFLA.com, the WFLA app. If I knew, I would say, I don't know. If I knew, I would say, I don't know. There's clearly now a major disconnect between Cassie Laundry, her husband here, and Brian Laundry's parents, her parents, uh, Chris and Roberta Laundry here. They're just not talking. And that's, again, according to Cassie Laundry, there's a divide now. And we'll get into the attorney and how Stephen Bertolino kind of factors in here. But anything to note here before we get on to the next question, Masa or I Walt? Just, I just want to say so after she made that statement later on, on the 
in the interview, she kind of gave us a little bit more context saying that the attorney told her parents to stop talking to her. So I just think it's important to point that out. Thank you. Thank you for pointing that out here. Moss, again, full the full video on WFLA.com, the WFLA app. And I, I have to repeat myself with things like that and the hashtag system here because we're always constantly engaging a new digital audience. The big revolving door, we engage a new digital audience in, in the thousands every five minutes. So I have to. It's part of my job here. I don't want people to think that I'm just repeating myself because I have to or because I'm, I, I want to. It's because I have to. So I'm going to continue to repeat these points here that are very, very important to our constantly newly emerging here digital audience here. Let's listen in. The next question, do you think the parents are involved? We don't know. We have literally been finding everything out with the news with like everybody else. My kids are upset. You're upsetting my neighbors and all we want to do is let you guys know that we don't know. What happened? What did you guys do on the 6th? All right, so before before the, this next question comes in, and it's about Fort DeSoto and the campground here, but Cassie Laundry, Masa and Walt, saying here that she is uh, just she's in the dark just like everybody else as far as these very important questions to the Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry story here. The question there was, do you think your parents are involved, correct? Right. And she, I mean, it is an interesting answer. She says she doesn't know. It's not a no. It's an I don't know, which is an interesting answer, I think. Moss, anything to add there before we move on? I mean, all, all I would say is at this point, she wants to be very careful about what she says. Like she, you know, her parents, she just has to be very careful about what she says at this point. The FBI has told her not to talk, and she knows that, you know, anything that she says to the media could come back in the future. So I think at this point, she's really focused on protecting uh, her children, her family, and making sure that this episode doesn't repeat itself. All right, next portion here. This is now moves on now to the to the camping trip uh, at Fort DeSoto Campground on September 6th and September 7th, where we're going to hear from Cassie Laundry about her visit there specifically to Fort DeSoto Campground in Pinellas County on September 6th. Is let you guys know that we don't know what happened. What, what did nothing. you guys do on the sixth through the eighth at Fort DeSoto? We were at Fort DeSoto on the sixth. We got there at around two o'clock. And we left around eight because the kids had school the next day okay. on the sixth. We only stayed for about six hours. We, my mom, my dad, my brother. Would you and guys be willing to go on on? So her, her dad, and her brother, her mom, and her brother. Right. As as really, I mean, this is what we've been finding out now. Trickles of information coming out here, but confirming uh, that they were there on September sixth. Didn't stay into the seventh. But they were there on September 6th. Walt, Masa, anything to, to add here? Here Because we've been talking now about the Fort DeSoto uh, camping trip here and how that is, of course, a, an interesting... Uh, it's an interesting point on the timeline because Brian Laundrie returns home on, from this cross-country road trip. He's without his fiance, And a, a few days later, he and his family go camping? You know, and I, I know that question has been asked, um, and it this sort of, I think, this answer fills in that blank a little uh, more clear. Um, but I think others have pointed out that to get a camp spot at that very popular location, you might not have gotten it by trying to look into it on the third or the first. It could have been something that, that had been planned for a while. That's part of the, that's a question I would ask, I think at this point, but it sounds like, you know, she's simply confirming that uh, she saw Brian at Fort DeSoto on the, the 6th, correct? She saw him on the 6th. Um, and uh, I don't know if we have track of him after that, but he was gone within days, right? Yeah, I mean, that, that is a major point. And now, uh, now let me make this clear here, folks. Uh, Cassie Laundry would go on <clears throat> here after this point in time, as we understand it, or around this point in time here, as far as uh, her confrontation here with protesters outside of her home. She did a second Good Morning America interview. And in that interview, shared a picture of Brian Laundry with his nephew at the campsite on September 6th. So, Brian, we now have photo evidence now from Cassie Laundry here that, uh, that, that Brian was at the campsite. He was, yes, he was in fact there. There's photo evidence of it, uh, and there with, um, with, with his nephew. And uh, it's a picture of them right there on the water. And this is now another, another piece that people are just going to dissect and put under the microscope, Masa. Yeah, and I'm just, uh, I keep looking down because I'm referring to the log of this interview. want to make sure I get everything perfectly right. But, um, you know, I, she, did, she gave an explanation. They were at Fort DeSoto on the 6th. They got there at 2 o'clock. They left at 8. Uh, the 
Gabby incident, she says, she claims, did not come up at all. The kids were around. They had s'mores. They had dinner. And that was that. And I kind of want to find out. I think she says after that, that she really did not talk with them after that. But let me double check that. Let me continue reading my log. And uh, I, know, I know your listeners are going to have trouble with the claim that they didn't talk about Gabby. I, I would just think that yep. uh, as, would, as would possibly um, uh, investigators that you didn't talk about Gabby at all. I mean, that's interesting. And this now on September 6th is seven to eight days after her uh, death, according to the FBI. Yeah, from, from Jordan on Twitter, we'll take this hashtag AJB comment here from Twitter. Uh, from Jordan, hashtag AJB, if you got to talk to Cassie, what would you have asked her that the protesters or news hasn't? And it's exactly what we've all been talking about here. Uh, there, Gabby had to have been brought up. I would have. I would ask, how did Gabby not come up? You've mentioned that you loved her. She was like a sister, I think, in the first interview. I think she said she was like a sister to her. She missed her. I would ask her, how did Gabby not come up on the first or on the sixth, how did it not come up at all? How did and, you and not it is ask? Referenced did you very, ask very briefly, where Gabby was? It, it's referenced very briefly here in the clip, in, yes, in the full twenty-minute interview on WFLA.com. It's referenced very, very, very briefly, but it's not really addressed. And, and so, my, my answer here to Jordan w would be: I, I would stay on this point. This is all about Gabby, and right. I would stay with Cassie here, and I would say, Cassie, you had to have had conversations about Gabby Petito. Uh, in the flight home from Salt Lake City, in the September 1st visit to this house here in the Ford Mustang, right. and in the camping trip, what was the common knowledge within the family as to why Gabby wasn't there? And that's, I think, that's the first thing. It's the first thing I would ask. And so, as and, reporters, the, the best, the most important thing you do as a reporter is listen to the answer, right? Right. Because now here, if you don't get, and I've, I've heard reporters not do that at news conferences. They ask a question. They let somebody slide without really answering it. You ask it again, and you ask it a third time. You ask it a fourth time until I think it's better explained. And maybe they didn't talk about Gabby, but I think you have to clarify that. To yeah, it, you have to stay on that thread. And, and you have to keep things 100%. focused on what matters. And there's been in the clip in the full 20 minute interview there's all these ancillary questions that are asked here that and there's some confusion based on uh, some questions that um that were just kind of off base here and you have to stay kind of very very much rooted in the questions that matter and that is the one that's the one that matters most to me you had all of these encounters with your brother um you know ping-ponging back and forth between wyoming utah and and, and florida why wasn't the questioner, what were you told as to why Gabby wasn't in Florida with her fiance, Brian Laundrie, at the time? So about two minutes in, the protesters asked, what were you guys doing at Fort DeSoto? In some and substance, that was, an ex that was essentially what they asked. And she said, we had s'mores, we had dinner. And then a protester yells, did Brian say anything about Gabby? She says, Cassie responded, we had our kids there, nothing came and up. I I and then yep. another person said, he didn't say anything about Gabby and she responded no and she immediately transitioned to saying we've told the FBI everything the world does not need to know what the FBI knows and that's why we're silent and, and Masa re repeat the first few words of her response there one more time because I want to I hone in here on this for a second okay so what were you guys doing at Fort DeSoto they asked that in a longer yep. way we had s'mores we had dinner did Brian say anything about Gabby we had our kids there. Nothing came up. We Cat had our kids yeah. there. Why is it inappropriate for to ask about where where their aunt is? We so so it's like she's it, not their aunt yet, and maybe well, it's, maybe it, yep, may, good point. Thank maybe, you. Maybe um, they referred to I her mean, as Auntie you Gabby. Could, I could make all sorts of assumptions of why that wouldn't come up. All of which are not positive assumptions, so I'm not going to bring them up. There's a lot of reasons why you wouldn't want to talk about that in front of kids because maybe, I'm not going to say Unless any you knew something about what happened between Gabby and Brian that you're just not disclosing to the public and not disclosing in a forum such as this. Right, right. And, and so why, again, I'm just going to ask this one more time. Why, when... At, when, when asked that question, why have that response? Why say that it was inappropriate with the kids there? Oh, the kids are here. I'm not going to, we're not going to talk about Gabby. 
okay, why is that off limits? Why is that off the table? I, I just, that's a major point in the interview, Masa, and I'm glad that you brought it up here. Um, but let's continue talking here and playing back the clip from, again, uh, this Can is- Can I say one thing in response yes, to that? Yes, please do. So what I would say to that, because I always like to give all the viewpoints here, um, what I would say, it could have been that the kids are running around, it's busy, we're, you know, we just weren't talking, we're just kind of being present, we were being in the moment, we weren't talking about, you know- if the kids it, are it, other it, things, it, I don't. Maybe the kids were running around. Maybe the if the kids are running screaming, around, you know, then okay, kids go play. Let's, Please don't let's, send me hate Twitter mail. <laughs> I'm just giving the other I'm, uh, the other side and the interest of it's the only kind of tweets you know, I send you are hate, I know, hate tweets. No, uh, so, but is it interesting the juxtaposition the juxtaposition of what she said? She said. She's asked again, and does she say right after that that yeah. I told everything? Yes, to she, the she FBI. transitioned that's, immediately to that. Yep, it's kind of interesting. And you can um, listen for yourself. Go to two minutes into the clip. So she she's asked about Gabby. She's asked. She says, "What were you guys doing at Fort Desoto? Did you have a camp? What did you do? What did you do?" And she said, "We had s'mores. We had dinner." Did Brian say? Hold on. I, I, hold on. Hold on. I have, just look, play it. I, I, yes. Just play that's, it. That's that's the beauty it. of this one button I have here in yeah. front of us. Power. Say that you would like we your have. brother Brian Lottery. Yeah, knows all this. They've known this since. Yeah. We were, yeah, we had s'mores, we had dinner. Oh, I cut off. Can, may I for just a moment? What? It, it, over the last week on WFLA Now, when we've been talking about the camping trip and we've been trying to picture in our minds uh, Brian Laundry, his, his parents, Chris and Roberta, and of course, Cassie Laundry, being here at this campsite, I very coyly, it, I was very coy when I said, what, what are you doing out there? Just having s'mores? <laughs> I... I, I, I said it multiple times, and our WFLA Now viewers that have been watching here over the last several weeks know that I, that I kind of said that half-heartedly. Like, like what, what, as, as Gabby is out there missing or, or dead, you're going she's camping dead. and she's you're just dead. hanging she's out dead. She's making dead at that s'mores? Point. She's dead at that point. Right, dead at that point. What we so, don't know is, and we don't know this, I know people think they know, we don't know if Brian knew that she was dead at that point. We don't know that. We don't know, but it just seems so leisurely of the family to just be hanging out making s'mores while meanwhile up in new york on long island you have a family that is freaking out because they do not know where their daughter is were they freaking out on September one 6th? i don't know if they're freaking out on the sixth she said uh, uh, mrs that, that, well, no, mrs on. schmidt said it after eight or nine days of not hearing from her i think she said that on an interview on the 13th she that was her first news conference so actually if you do the math she said eight or nine days of not hearing from her she thought was a little much, and if you go for 27th plus 8 or 9, it gets you, yes, they, they very, I would be freaking out. I, if, I think Masa would be freaking out. I think out. it's I think fair to say I've been, I've, been, I've been talking to the family, uh, and I've talked about this on stream. I've been talking okay. to the Petito yeah. and Schmidt families. I, I can assure you at that point, they, they, are are they are at least nervous. Why haven't we heard from our daughter? Again, this going to the, that date, September. So why have we heard? So we have one family that is down in Florida camping, Having s'mores. Do we know if if they if uh, Nicole or Joe had reached out to Brian by that point? Because if this was That's my exactly daughter, the question that I have. If, uh, if, if this September was my 6th, daughter and now? my and and her fiance, and I hadn't heard from her, I'm calling Brian. I'd have Brian's number. So and we don't know that, and that is not casting any judgment on anybody. But at that, I believe if they had contacted him, he didn't respond, right? Because right. they said he had never respond. It was radio silence in the in the in the estimations of Joe Petito um, as far as uh, them trying to get answers as to where Gabby was by reaching out to not just Brian Laundry but also to Brian Laundry's family. So again, one more time, I'm just trying to just just paint a picture for our audience here, folks. It's September sixth, twenty twenty one. Nicole Schmidt, Gabby's mom, Joseph Petito, Gabby's father, doesn't know where Gabby is, hasn't heard from Gabby in a considerable amount of time, many, many days. They are, at the very least, Walt and Massa, nervous. At the very least, they are nervous. Meanwhile, Brian Laundry, Chris Laundry, Roberta Laundry, and Cassie Laundry uh, are making s'mores by, by the campfire. Now, we don't know what Chris, Roberta, and Cassie knew. Exactly. We don't know how open That's and honest. Point, and so it's not. very easy. It's all. very easy for our audience and for really the public in general to vilify those three. But we don't know what Brian, 
told his parents. We don't know what Brian told Cassie. We have a little bit of a better idea what Brian told Cassie because we're hearing here in this confrontation here some answers, and we've been hearing she's been the most vocal member of the family by far. One is missing. The other two, of course, are, are in their home in, in Northport. But we just don't know what Brian... Did Brian say that something happened? Did Brian say that something didn't happen? Was Brian just... Did Brian lie? We, these are all questions we don't know the answers to. But let's continue listening here. I just... When the s'mores comment came out, I thought that I'm like, we're living in a simulation because I had been talking about, uh, were, were they just on the campsite, uh, you know, eating s'mores, having a good old American time on a Florida beach, enjoying a beautiful sunset here in the Gulf of Mexico? And yeah, actually, that was, in fact, and at least what from, was happening. And from what Cassie Laundry has said at that point, that she had no knowledge that anything was amiss. So her having s'mores with her kids at the campground, um, based on her comments, it's up to the viewers if they want to believe her or not. That would not be, you know, something horrific or outlandish or a reason for people to, you know, vilify her. Let's keep playing the clip here, and uh, we'll go now to the next question, the next portion. does not need to know what the FBI knows. That's and true. that's why we're silent. They've asked us to not say anything, really. This is me coming out against them. My kids are upset. You're upsetting my children, who are very upset that they had to find out that their aunt died from you people screaming it at them from the house. September I've not seen 6th. anybody after 8 o'clock on September 6th. I have Okay, hold on. Let, let, let's, let's, let's poise to that previous point in time from here. From you people screaming it at them from the house. Okay, so let's poise... Let, let's just... Let's bring this up, Moss. I'm really you being a former former prosecutor in New York City. Very intrigued, very just curious as to your perspective on this. The FBI has told Cassie Laundry and her husband here to not speak, to not do exactly what they're doing right here in this clip, as far as uh, addressing all of this here publicly. And they are. They're coming out of their home here. They they are confronting these protesters. They want peace for their children inside the house, and they are going against the wills and wishes of the FBI here and speaking out here with, of course, cell phones rolling here. Um, what do you, what can you speak to that that sort of interesting dynamic as far as the FBI not wanting them to talk? And now, of course, we have this twenty minute clip. It's not just federal authorities. Anytime any agency is investigating uh, anything, they want to be very careful about the information that is given to the media. They want to be able to control that. So they'll let you know what they want you to know if they need your help. If were you in the you know dispersed camping area and Bridger Teton National Forest, sorry, I just messed up the name of that, but they release certain information that they want the public to know. So this is not just the FBI telling these people not to talk. Um, when I was a reporter out in Las Vegas, LVMPD always told people, you know, regarding homicides and things, that was the beat that I would cover over there, uh, would tell family members not to talk with the media or to be very careful about what they told the media. So this is a standard operating procedure. Law enforcement does not want, uh, in many cases, especially a case of this magnitude, for the family to stand out there and say everything to, uh, to, to, law, to law enforcement. But again, Cassie felt like that she had to do that because she says that the protesters were essentially harassing her because they're so upset about the Gabby Petito case, so devastated for what's happened to Gabby, so in desperate need to get information that they were standing outside this woman's house. And she felt that she had no choice but to come out for her family and for her neighbor's world. You know, I, I think, and again, back to what Moss has said. Yeah, this is the this is an old, old. This goes far beyond, far before TV. This is in old crime novels, ancient crime. Crime, you know that that the investigators don't want. They, as Moss has said, they want to control the message because they don't want it to get back where to a point where a suspect says it reveals some detail that nobody knows. In, in an interrogation process, and they don't want that suspect to be able to say, or that suspect's attorney to be able to say, oh, he heard that on TV. Oh, he heard that from a reporter. No, they want to control, they want to know exactly what's released so that when and if they're able to interrogate a suspect in a case, there is only so much out there, and the suspect may reveal something that was not re released, and not now it's incriminating. Yep. How'd you know that? Well... Uh, I don't know. Exactly. I, 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 you were there, right? You exactly. were there, Mr. But Suspect. W with the cause of death, like why don't we know the cause of death yet? That could be uh, information that's being withheld Absolutely. purposefully to, you, to get him. Do you him. think they know the cause of death? 
Um, I don't know. They haven't released it. <laughs> awesome. Very, Solid very, answer. very I'm close to the best get here with that answer. Out of me. I think there's a possibility they, they know the cause of death, but yeah, that, that's exactly right. They know it. They, I mean, you, you wonder, they know they're, they're, a, they're sure it's a homicide, but, um, how do they know that? What was obvious to them or somewhat obvious to them to call it a homicide? Let's continue playing the clip here because we've been slowly going through this because there's been so many intriguing points to make here for our audience. J.B. Buno, Mas Saidi, Walt Buteau. You can use any of the hashtags here on your screen. There are thousands of hashtag AJB, hashtag AMASA, hashtag AWALT questions and comments here. We're not going to be able to get to them all here, but as soon as we're done here, we've got another 60 seconds in this video when, it, when we're done. Guys, are you okay with us going rapid fire through as many as we can here to help out our audience? Let's try let's try to do that this is the next portion uh, of of the clip here again cassie laundry her husband coming out to confront here the protesters outside their home yesterday october 4th 2021 seen anybody after eight o'clock on september 6th i have not spoken to my parents so you know big right there okay so 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 cassie laundry they're saying i haven't seen anybody uh since that september Sixth encounter, Masa. Fort DeSoto, yeah, they, they walked off, they, they finished their dinner, finished their s'mores, walked off the Fort DeSoto campground, and she says, quote, again, that's why I'm looking down. I'm just reading. She says, I haven't seen anyone since that time, and she says, I have not spoken to my parents. Again, we know that's because the attorney allegedly told the parents to not talk with anyone, including Cassie. Yeah, so um, this is now a key point in time. I, I get asked all the time on Twitter, on Instagram, on, on Facebook, I get asked, when was the last time somebody saw Brian Laundry? When was the last time somebody had eyes on them? It's, and really, Walt Massa, it's, at, it's September 6th at the campground. That's the last known verified That's right. That's concrete location here. I want to point out here just in moments ago here, and it's not, it, it, I just want to point this out. Uh, the Gabby Petito Foundation are releasing a statement on Twitter. We have no words for how grateful we are for all of the support you all have shown us. We see you. We love you. Thank you. GabbyPetitoFoundation.org. That just popped up on my phone here. I wanted to read September, that here. And September 6th is also two days before the uh, chief in Northport said he knew where Brian was. Mm -hmm. And then that Friday, the shocker comes. We haven't seen, they find out from the family, they had not seen him since the 6th. So the, so the 6th weighs as heavy as the 27th does, doesn't it? It's, it's a the big The 27th date. has so many in that timeline, has so many dots on it. And so does the so does the 6th. Yeah, and again, for those of you just joining us, there was a second GMA interview that Cassie Laundry did. And in that one, she provided GMA with a photo of Brian Laundrie at the campground there, at the waterfront campsite, 001 there at Fort DeSoto campground. So it's photo evidence uh, that Brian Laundrie was in fact on that camping trip. Not that we really had any doubt really at this point, but if anybody wanted that concrete visual evidence, it's now there. Um, let's continue playing here again, the clip of Cassie Laundrie and her husband confronting protesters outside the home. After eight o'clock on September 6th, I had after 8 o'clock on After September 6th, that was the last time that Cassie had... But the parents are still there, so presumably... What she happens? left. She leaves. The she parents doesn't know are still what there. happened. She said, I, she, she doesn't, doesn't know, know if Brian happened. stayed. She doesn't the know... parents presumably yeah. have said... What happens after 8 o'clock if they've been asked, right? Because they did tell investigators we saw him on the 6th. Let's play back. Let's, let's 60 seconds left in this clip. Let's play it all back, and then we'll all break it down and take your hashtag AJB, hashtag AMASA, hashtag AWALL questions. I've not spoken to my parents. Do you so, know that she was missing when they went to Fort DeSoto? No. no. You didn't have so no clue that she was missing? The detective that was working with Gabby's mom called me up while we were on vacation. We were in Orlando. And then I called her back because we were eating dinner and I told her everything she needs to know. We told them from day one that we were at Fort DeSoto with them on the 6th and that they came over here on the 1st. The police has known everything that's out there the whole time from September 11th night on. That's when I became involved and I knew nothing before that. We're... I love you monsters were made out to be. I just want to... That was kind of a little bit hard to hear, but... We're not the monsters that we're made out to be, are the words here from, again, two, two parents that are coming out here to their front lawn because, again, they're confronting protesters and trying to calm down their kids inside they're being confronted, who are crying. I would say. Yes. They're being confronted. Yes. Thank you for, cl thank you for clarifying that. It's a, uh, uh, what's the saying here, you guys? Uh, uh, teamwork makes the stream work, yeah. right? <laughs> Let's continue playing here. This is now on Brian flying home on September 17, 2021, which we just found out from, again, uh, Stephen Bertolino, the attorney, more details here at the top of the stream, but let's listen in here about this. Here on the 17th, I don't know what day he left. 
Did you see him at that on that trip? Yes. He was telling me where they were going next. I FaceTimed with Gabby and the kids on that trip. And, then... and that's it. Uh, as far, again, the full video on WFLA.com, the WFLA app, but those are some of the moments that we wanted to play back here for you on stream. And yes, we now have it confirmed from Steven Bertolino, the attorney uh, for Brian Laundry, uh, saying that there was a flight from Salt Lake City on September 17th. Got back. What was the dates, you guys? I just want to make sure. Here, I have it right here. Yep, the 23rd. Get back on the 23rd. And, and that's a period of how many? Is that six, six or seven? Or, it seems seven. It's 17. Oh, I count with my that's a week. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 18. seven. Yeah, we're, we're all like like third well, graders here counting the seven, days. Most of seven days. Could have been a morning flight, but still. Yeah. It's a week. It's what's, a, Gab, what's Gabby doing that, during that time? She apparently is fine, right? Because she is um, FaceTimed she's, uh, FaceTimed at what, the 21st? She, she said, I don't think she gave the date of when she FaceTimed. She said during Brian's trip from the and 17th then the text, to the 23rd. The, the odd text about Stan. It was the 27th. 27th. Yeah. The sighting at the restaurant, the 27th. And I Setting believe in the, the van. 26th. And the van spotted by the video blogger from Spring Hill on the 27th, later in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, so there the timeline coming together here, folks. But it does it get us any closer to the major question, where is Brian Laundry? It I think that the more that the timeline comes together, but but let me make one thing really clear and then we're gonna start to go rapid fire through our comment queue here of hashtag AJB, hashtag A Masa, hashtag A Wall comments and questions here. I wanna make this very, very clear. We've talked about this over the last month, month now, and I wanna just hammer home this one point. We're all learning things that the FBI has likely known for a very long time. We're catching up here. So we're three weeks, you guys, behind the FBI as far as the information that they have received here, which means that right now, at this point in time, perhaps the FBI is three weeks ahead of us right now. So there's more information that could be coming out here in the days or weeks ahead that the FBI has just known for a considerable amount of time. It's, it's ancient news to them. It's new to us, and it feels new and important to us. But this is all something that the FBI has had through interviews, official interviews conducted with individuals like Cassie Laundrie over, of course, the last several weeks. And from time to time, these FBI files be are made public um, occasionally, and you see how, and it, it would be years, years before that happened, if it happened. Guys, let's take now your hashtag HeyJB, hashtag HeyMasa, hashtag HeyWalt, questions and comments here, and we'll try to get through as many as we can. One more here from Twitter. I promised I would take this one from uh, Michaela. hashtag HeyJB. Do we know why the attorney even mentioned Cassie's name at all? Kind of strange considering she's not his client. Masa, you're the perfect person to answer this as far as uh, you being a former prosecutor here. Is it strange to you that Stephen Bertolino references Cassie by name and he and he does right in the in of course the statement that was put out last night uh to uh to Brian uh Enton and nights others ago, wasn't it a couple of days ago? and I'll bring that up here just so that yeah. we're all on the same page um yeah so uh I think what you guys are referencing right now is when we found out that Cassie had been uh on September 1st had seen Brian her brother on September 6th had seen Brian, her brother. People reached out to the attorney for the laundry family. At the time, we didn't know exactly which laundries he represented. And I think the attorney was trying to um, kind of give her side. Here's the, of, here's the here's yeah. the here's the statement uh, that was put out last night to the press uh, from Stephen Bertolino. This was right after this confrontation occurred between oh, that Cassie, statement. Cassie Laundry. Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is uh, Stephen Bertolino saying... I do not represent Cassie Laundry. Mm -hmm. Cassie's comments can only be attributed to the press twisting my words and hers, which were only given to clarify prior mischaracterizations by the press with the hopes of further sensationalizing this tragic story here. But, and that's the end of the quote, but I just want to make this clear here. These, these, these questions and this, and this, all this information in this exchange that came out on the front lawn of Cassie Laundry's home, this, this wasn't the press. This, this wasn't the press. This was, this was protesters, not the press. So uh, this is um, interesting here to Michaela's comment here, Masa, that he does twice in the statement reference Cassie Laundry by name. Is that strange to you at all? It's not strange to me at all. I think he's trying to do damage control uh, on the story and to get out, you know, facts when he feels that he can release facts, when he feels that it's advantageous to the Laundry family to release the facts. And I think he was just trying to, uh, 
you know, this is a story that's blowing up all over the place. Every reporter in the country feels like at times is texting him for information. And I think he's making those calls in the moment when he's going to respond to the media. And he chose to try to provide some clarification. Well, not odd to me. No, I, I think, um, I mean, the, the one thing you can presume here is that he has an interest in the clients that he does have. And like Moss said, it could very well be damage control. And, and it sounds like he's putting some blame on the media. Um, there's a lot of media involved. There's a lot of pseudo media involved that may not have uh, the highest standards in the world. Um, and, and so I think he's trying to, you know, again, damage control, potential damage control. And again, I want to make it clear here, too. We didn't have it here in the snippet, but um, Cassie Laundry is of the opinion that the attorney threw Stephen Bertolino threw her under the bus. And we talked about this last week on WFLA Now. And I said, I said, if you're Cassie Laundry and, and, and this is coming out about you, you're, you're, not feeling, you're, you're not feeling good at this particular moment in time. But let, let's kind of let's try to carry the conversation forward with more of your comments and questions here. Tiffany Hag, hashtag KJB. Cassie simply saying, I don't know when asked if her brother killed someone says a lot to me. Tiffany is, makes a good point here in that Cassie doesn't defend and I, I pointed this out last night on Twitter. Cassie doesn't defend Brian here in, in this 20-minute clip. Doesn't say, there's, doesn't say something to the effect of, there's no way my brother is capable of such a, such a horrific thing. He was in love with Gabby. They were going to be together forever. This is not the couple that you think. She didn't give a testimony or a plea to people to, to, to say that Brian was incapable of such a terrible act. And this is uh, something that our commenters have been noting very much, uh, at least over the last 12 hours since this clip uh, surfaced online. Two quick points. She did say that she has never seen uh, Brian. I was trying to pull up the yep, exact yep, words, yep. but she said that she had never seen Brian uh, hit a woman and that she hadn't seen any violent fights between Brian and Gabby. And at the end, she did say that Brian was the hero of her children and she wants and hopes that he is found alive and the sooner the can better I, can I, i'm getting some tweets here and i want to clarify a timeline and that should say brian flying home on august 17th should oh it? I, I, uh, yep that's okay, but, that but is but an now, incorrect and then, caption oh, we, we and apologize, i think, guys, and I yeah. think we did did we we were discussing the sixth that's that's the that's the camping trip september 6th that's but that is not trip. the last time the Before parents saw him right they saw september him the next 14th is the, the last 14th time. Yes, is sir. the 14th and i i, I and yes so that was so an they, editing mistake on the right. caption apologies but, there so the Sorry so the parents that. saw him for another week or so According after the six and then reported him uh, missing on the 17th right. to police right. on that friday that was a surprise to everyone that's right. the day after the chief said we know where he is yeah well, you Surprise. don't. Nobody sure. knows where he is now. Let's get to this uh, next one here from Angie Hayden. Hashtag KJB. Have the airlines confirmed that he actually flew home? Because I don't see Gabby's dad letting her stay all alone out there if they knew. Interesting comment here from Angie. Gabby Petito, 22 years old, staying out there uh, in a probably a very unfamiliar place to her. In, in Wyoming or in Utah or in Salt Lake City, all by herself I there. Think I, I think I'd be afraid. If, if it was my daughter? Like, oh, if it was my daughter, oh. yeah. I mean, no, 100%. I'd be afraid for her, but I think even myself, in the middle of the woods, no lights, darkness, um, no help nearby, I'd be afraid. Good point. And we, we don't, she could have been like. She is 22. She could have been in a hotel room making posts or, or not right. making posts, but watching Netflix or, you know, doing what a, what a normal 22 year old girl would do. But uh, all alone there for nearly a week while your fiance flew home to Florida and you didn't go with your fiance to Florida and you're just kind of out there in a in a in a strange, unfamiliar place. Um I understand this comment here from, from Angie. Yes. Any, any additional words there? August twelfth, she had told the officers on the body cam video that she didn't she didn't want to be left alone that night. So maybe that was just an emotional state she was in. But that's it. That's all I have to say. Joan Metcalf, hashtag KJB, have Brian's parents made any new statements? You saw them. Everybody, just go like this have all they made simultaneously. Old statements? I don't know. They've made any, have have they, they made any statements? It's just through all been through, through Bertolino. Yeah. So no. Yeah, no. Does this now change the dynamic to where Bertolino says to Chris and Roberta, we need, we, we need to, we need to, you know, 
clear the air here and we need to speak and we need to talk to the, the public at large? Or It depends it just- what we know about Bertolino. I know nothing about him other than this particular incident. What There are attorneys who would say, don't talk, don't talk, and by the way, don't talk. And there are attorneys who would say... You Let's should get out there. Let's make a statement, <laughs> right? Make, you can read this while I'm next to you. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So, so I don't know. I don't know that we we don't know enough about Stephen Bertolino. We probably could Google some things and find out. We don't know why they picked him. Did they pick him because he's from the area where they are from? That's possible. Um, but but uh, that that could go either way about uh, about coaxing them. But it is a good point, right? Um, your daughter is saying this. Do you need to clarify? I'm very curious to see what happens here now. Is, is Cassie Laundry uh, is now that she's got the protesters off her lawn? And it did end with that, by the way. The protesters said, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna leave you be now. We're gonna let you go." And um, and and does does is Cassie Laundry done telling her side of the story? Where does this go now from here? I'm gonna guess no, because she's probably talked more than anyone anybody else anybody. in this case. Even the parents of Gabby so Petito, true. right? Yep. Multiple times, multiple headlines, right? From day one, day almost day one. Abby Palmer, hashtag AJB, let's find Brian this week. Okay. I'm glad someone from the family is speaking out. I, I, I echo this. I, I want Brian Laundry found. We all want Brian Laundry found. We want uh, answers. Just want answers. Um, Mary Niemeyer, hashtag AJB, she didn't ask, where's Gabby? She was at their campsite for six hours. What did they talk about? This goes back to what uh, you, you, me, and, and, and Masa, what we're just talking about here a short time ago. Um, just a few more questions in the queue here. But Mary saying, how was it not brought up for over a six-hour camping visit? How do you not talk about Gabby? How do you not Two find visits, out- right? Two visits. The first and yep. then the sixth. The, the first and then and the ping-ponging back and forth. And how do you not... Talk, and it had to have come up. It had to have come let, up. Let me, be, let me play devil's advocate, though. We're, we're, we're only reflecting on what maybe we would do with our sister or our brother, right? If it was my brothers, yeah, they'd probably know everything. If it was my sister, they'd probably know everything. But families are different. We don't, know the, we don't really know anything about the relationship of this family. So maybe they, don't, maybe they don't talk about those sort of things. That's possible. But I think most people are wondering exactly what Mary Niemeyer is wondering. I'm a reporter. What I, I, did I, I, they talk about? I'm a reporter. I'm nosy. When right. I get together with family, I'm asking all the questions. Every right. question. I yeah, want, it's I want annoying. The, it's I, annoying, right? You're yeah. annoying. I'm annoying. And, I definitely am. Right? And... Well, that took everything well, well, I had to hold back. Just, <laughs> no, it's true. I, well, I get, I, I've had conversations with people. I'm naturally curious. Me too. I'm naturally curious. And yep. I've said, I feel like, and I've heard people say, I feel like I'm being interviewed by a reporter. I said, well, I'm not. I'm just curious. I'm a very curious person. I will say that uh, Cassie did say that she was eight, nine years apart from her brother. Mm-hmm. I can't find the exact statement. That's a good she, point. But she basically said, hey, he's just a brother that I didn't hang out with that much. In some so, substance, something like that. That's she did possible. say that. Uh, a large Anything's possible. Age gap there, but let me let me just let me just throw it back the other way for a second. If I had a sibling, a loved one, that just went on a cross country road trip and saw the United States. Me again, Walt, to what you said, I'm a curious person. I'm asking my sibling about every spot. What was the best food you had? How much fun did you sure. have with your, with your wife? Oh my God, what was the best site that you saw? What was fun? Were there challenges? Uh, did you get a flat tire ever? Were you we, starving we are, the whole the way, time? And let, 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 go back, going back to that timeline, we are at this point on the 6th of September, we're using our hindsight. Uh, Gabby's not missing on the 6th of September. She's not reported missing. We don't know Five anything until the 11th. We haven't met the parents until the following week. So so we don't know that. We're, we're, and so if you superimpose your hindsight on this, yeah, why didn't you ask? Because now we know on the 6th, Gabby had been sadly dead for about a week. What did they talk about for six hours? Ali Lines, hashtag KJB, hashtag Walt. This is the, the, the final couple here. Hashtag KJB, hashtag Walt. Do we know if they are still searching? And if so, do we know where? And we reported yesterday that the search had gone a little bit deeper into Carlton Reserve near Mayanka River State Park. Uh, search efforts ongoing there still at the reserve. Uh, until they say otherwise, there's a search going on at Carlton Reserve. Now, they could say at any moment, all right, we've wrapped up our search efforts here. But you have to remember that 
when they had boots on the ground there, and they do have boots on the ground, they said, we're committed to checking all 25,000 acres of this reserve. Uh, but you have to, if they're not searching there as much, then has the, sh has the search shifted to a new area? And, uh, and do people, they want us to know where that new area is? Right. Is 25,000 acres out there. 25, the size of a good sized city out there. And um, so, yeah, I mean, they're, they, they, they and, and cameras, there's, there are trail cameras. Have they seen something recently? They, I've reached out to the people last week who uh, run the trail cameras. They said they were told not to talk about the trail cameras. So along those lines, maybe they've seen something. Maybe that's why they're still there. We don't know. How about this last one? I'm very curious. I've had this one thrown my way on my WFLAJB Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter a whole lot. So I'm so glad that we're able to finally answer this question here with two, again, of our eight or on your side investigators and Masa being a, 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 a former uh, prosecutor, Jennifer Marie Cook, hashtag KJB. If, and I have to prep, if, 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 if this ends up going to trial, how will they ever find an impartial jury? Masi, you want to take this one they first? They just will. You would, you would uh, <laughs> try to move it out of the Tampa Bay area. You would, uh, or wherever they actually might actually be in Wyoming. You would try to, you could move to change the venue. Um, you would have a really long process of questioning jurors. And, Wadir. Yeah. Yep. And, and this, you know, trying to find they, people that are going to they be all, they're up, to you know, and again, being impartial and listening to the And again, to you, I don't know how closely you're watching this when you're home with your family. I, and I know that. I've maybe scaled back a little bit, but I do. Oh, this case? Yeah, yeah. I've been so, watching it closely just because, trying to keep up with y'all. Well, right. No, I know. It's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> you guys but, are, but, you guys are that's, amazing. That's yeah. my point, is that the viewer is, the viewers who are with us now are, I'm going to use the word obsessed. I think they'd admit They are it. not going, none of you guys but are going to be on the jury. Assume, there will, I've sat in mm -hmm. on big cases in small states. I've sat in on big cases. I've covered them in big states that, that everybody knew about these particular cases. And you're still, there are Absolutely. occasionally people yeah. During the voir dire process, it's fascinating. And some people think, oh, they're making it up. They do know about it, but they want to be on the jury. Well, it's not that you don't know about it. It's that you're committed to, that's you, right. you that's haven't right. made any, you're, That's right. You, you haven't decided which way this you're, goes. And I think- You're allowed I think, to know about that. Yeah, you're allowed, you're allowed to know to about, about it. I think people are fair. If I may, I think, yeah, go if ahead. I may for a second, this was something that came up during the Derek Chauvin trial. Uh, sure. the, the, the officer right. in the George right. Floyd case, right? right? I mean, we're, we're talking about a, and the, the defense was arguing that the, that the, just the manic media and public attention had permeated the jury's minds and that there was no way to find jurors or jurors that were completely obscure from all of the the happenings and occurrences of what happened in this country with, uh, with George Floyd and the aftermath of George Floyd. So it, it's very similar to that in that how do you find an impartial jury? But to Massa and Walt's point here, you just do. You find jurors that are going to be objective, and you, as I think Massa noted, you look outside of the Tampa Bay area and you look Possibly, for folks yeah. that aren't. Well, where? The, what is the jurisdiction for this? Yeah, case? I was thinking the, about the case, that. Yeah. The, the yeah, jurisdiction is probably know, yeah. Wyoming yeah. at this we're, point because where the that's where the crime occurred. Right. Yeah. So, and if that's the case, is it a federal case? Now, because can you find can lines. you find twelve jurors in Wyoming? Wyoming has a half million people in it. Think about it. I mean, I would mm -hmm. bet you can. You're more likely to find impartial jurors or people that maybe don't know it as well as others in Wyoming. And then each side gets a peremptory challenge, right? You get well, so many we, peremptory yeah, you challenges. Get so many, and we are getting so far ahead of ourselves. I know. We don't have it a, is. right, and we don't. Have, and right now, the charge is it's a felony, but it's um, bank it's, fraud. It's it's uh, fraud. credit card unauthorized, fraud or debit card un fraud. Unauthorized use device of use of device. Dollars, right. Yeah. That's it. Ma society. Walt Buteau joining us here, everybody, for extended coverage here on WFLA Now. Before we let you guys go, just kind of your final thoughts here. Masa, why don't you go first? Um, what are you working on tonight? What are you going to be working on over the next several hours here? And is there anything else that you want to point out to our viewers that we did not cover here on this stream? No, I'll be on at 5 and 6 tonight. I'm going to go work on that because it is, uh, what time is it right now? It's, 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 it's late. It's 2.14, JB. Um, I kept you on a little longer <laughs> okay. than I should it's have. It's okay. We're, we're glad to always be here with you, JB. Um, I guess my... My final comments are the Cassie Laundry did come out and she did speak with people that had been yelling outside of her home and she answered their questions and she said that she has uh, been fully cooperating with the FBI and she has told the FBI that everything that she uh, that she knows and she provided context more context regarding the GMA interview that she gave and it is up to everyone at home whether they want to believe it or not. 
that's it. You'll see her tonight on WFLA News Channel 8. Walt so, Buteau, what so are uh, your final thoughts? What are you working on, and uh, what are you going to be monitoring here? I'm working on a Fatita-related story, but I'm working on a different investigation that will be on at 6. But I'll tell you, I think that uh, this just um, – it's a little – I'm going to use the word troubling. Somebody criticized me for critic. Somebody criticized me for criticizing the protesters. Not many, but one or two. Um, it's a little troubling that that these folks were egged out of their house. They're not charged with anything. They're not suspected of anything by any law enforcement that we know of. They got egged on out of their house because of uh, people with bullhorns on their street. People with bullhorns are allowed to be on that street, probably unless it's a noise ordinance violation. But um, but it is a little troubling about that. That's troubling. But they did they did offer some information and some insight that fills in the timeline, and I think uh, that's appreciated. But they also have drawn the ire, it seems, of their parents' attorney at the same time. This sets a precedent now, it, it, and uh, you know, a a couple here shouldn't be um, harassed into an interview. Uh, it shouldn't be harassed we coming do outside that. of, I mean, of we, their we, home. I, we, look, we knock on doors, and that's annoying enough. I've admitted, look, we're annoying enough. We'll knock on doors. We'll make phone calls. But I, don't, I would not say we harass, um, and we do not stand. We are, are not allowed. We, we, I guess we would be allowed, but we do not use bullhorns from the sidewalk to get people to talk. But and I, and I would just that's like, what happened here. I would like to point out, too, that the year is 2021. Cassie Laundry could have done an interview from the comfort of her own home inside from her couch, done it on Zoom. There's, we do Zoom. Yeah. How many Zoom interviews do we do in this newsroom every day? A lot. A lot. We do Zoom interviews all the time because, of course, the pandemic, and, and it's just really accessible in an easy way to, of course, uh, get somebody on camera no matter where they are in the world. Right. And Cassie could have done this, answered all of these questions without the constant back and forth and talking over her and interjecting. And um, there was a lot here that could have been much more civil. And there could have been more of a back and forth conversation. Uh, a investigator like Walt would have pressed on with a question about why didn't you ask more questions about where Gabby was when you were with him on September 1st and on September 6th? Why wasn't that more you know, you specifically re, you addressed? You just re-asked that question kindly, though. They, they, these questions were shouted at them. But again, I don't want to get in trouble on, on Twitter again or Facebook about... But I, I, I said, I've said it before. I think that... Um, this is uh, this. It's just sad that uh, the family's being harassed when nothing's been proven at all. Nothing's been implicated at all with these two individuals on the screen right there. Eight on your side, senior investigator Walt Buteau joining us. Walt, thanks a lot. We'll see you soon. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, back here with you live, everybody on WFLA now, and uh, yeah, just with uh, you know the protesters have their of course their constitutional right to to demonstrate, and um, they were having a conversation here, and we learned a lot here from. Uh, from we got a lot more clarification here as far as some of what Cassie Laundry and her husband uh, had to say here uh, in this in this exchange that occurred quite literally on her front lawn here. So we were able to dissect some of that information. The tactics for which this interview was obtained um, are, let's just say, unorthodox, and um, and I will just kind of leave it at that. Uh, some are going to be, of course. Um, uh, very say that it was very, very fortunate that we have this information now. Others are going to say that this was just uh, crossing a line, crossing a line here as far as uh, these two coming out of their home, saying that their kids are inside crying and we just want some peace here for our children. So I understand that there's going to be people out there that are going to see the value in getting information here in this way. And then others who are going to say that this just crossed a line. It crossed the line as far as uh, as far as the tactics that were used here to speak to Cassie Laundry and her husband here. When in reality, she did another interview with Good Morning America. She did another interview with ABC, and it didn't incur it didn't include all the constant interjecting. It didn't include all the constant speaking over her. And there would have been a more civil back and forth conversation here had it not been, of course, an exchange here with protesters here in Lakewood Ranch. Uh, let's kind of explain where we go here now and and how this goes forward here. The full video is on WFLA.com. If you don't want the snippets, you don't want the conversation, you don't want the analysis from me and Masa and Walt, you don't want all that. You just want to listen to it for yourself. We totally understand that. We, we've had it on our website for hours. So go and, and give it a watch. Um, if you'd like to hear uh, Cassie Laundry, uh, if you'd like to hear the exchange here, just completely unfiltered. That's what you deserve. 
And that's what we're giving to you. And we didn't get that with the original first interview with Good Morning America. That full raw interview never, never saw the, um, you know, never saw the channels of Twitter and Facebook where we could get more of an understanding contextually as to what was being t discussed. Um, but we have that here for you. The entire full uh, confrontation here, the entire full exchange, the clip, the video clip is on WFLA.com and the WFLA app. You can go over to Facebook. You can go over to YouTube. There's a link there in the comments there, and you can listen to it all uh, for yourself there uh, on our website. Um, as far as where we go from here, we're on standby here on WFLA Now. Any new developments, we're here with you live. But there were a lot of questions and comments here that we were uh, unable to get to here. So in the next 20 or so minutes, I'm going to go live on Instagram. I don't want to alienate our Instagram audience, especially considering that we had, of course, um, yesterday we had that outage, that massive outage on Facebook and on Instagram. So I'm going to head over to my WFLAJB Instagram. We're live on Facebook right now. So Facebook's covered. Uh, we've been bringing in your tweets. Uh, YouTube is covered. Hello there to YouTube. Hope everybody's having a good day out there on YouTube. YouTube and um and and we're gonna now go live on Instagram. I'm gonna go live on Instagram on my WFLA JB Instagram account, take some more questions and comments. And if you follow me over there, I'll look for your hashtag AJB comments and questions over there so we can, can continue the conversation and do it with an audience. There's a lot of folks out there that just have Instagram and just use Instagram. So I would like to in interact and engage with the audience uh, there. That's coming your way in the next 20, maybe 25 minutes here. But let me explain. We're in standby mode on WFLA now. We'll go live with any more new big developments here uh, in the Brian Laundry, Gabby Petito, Cassie Laundry. Uh, Chris and Roberta Laundry. this entire case, of course, this entire story, if there's any new developments, we're back here with you live on WFLA Now. And our article hub, all of the latest here on this story, it lives on WFLA.com and the WFLA app. Our award-winning team working around the clock. Always on, always cranking out content as far as uh, the latest here on Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry. You can find it in our article hub, including a full timeline that we'll have to update. I believe that we have been updating. Uh, with these new developments on WFLA.com and the WFLA app. I'm heading over to my WFLA JB Instagram account. Give me a few minutes here just to uh, get a drink of water, and I'll see you guys over there in a few minutes on my WFLA JB Instagram. And again, the latest for you on this story on Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry on WFLA.com and the WFLA app.
streaming live on WFLA Now, powered by 1-800-ASK-GARY. Here's J.B. Buno. Hello again to our audience here on YouTube. J.B. Buno here with you live on WFLA Now, and we did end the stream here on Facebook. But on YouTube, we are still live. To our YouTube audience, this is live as of 2.34 Eastern Time. Why am I back? Because Eagle 8 HD is back. Back uh, here in rural Sarasota County, Florida here, uh, flying over and really around the laundry search area here. So we were going to replay here on YouTube for our YouTube audience here. We were going to replay uh, our previous stream, but why replay something you just watched when we can bring you something here live? I'm about to go live here on my WFLAJB uh, Instagram uh, account here in just a moment, but I wanted to put this up here for all of you that have been asking about aerial coverage of the search itself. So this is Eagle 8 HD making one of its routine flights here uh, over uh, over the area or around the laundry search area. This is near now Carlton Reserve, Mayaka River State Park, um, and I want to put this up here. Just for you guys, just for you guys here on YouTube and also on WFLA.com and the WFLA app. So here's what I'm going to do. Yeah, uh, to Anne and a few others, hello there to YouTube. You guys are, um, I really appreciate you guys. A lot of comments out there on YouTube that are uh, completely um, just, you know, have nothing to do here with Gabby Petito or Brian Laundry, but to those uh, commenters on YouTube that do have meaningful uh, hashtag AJB and other uh, comments here in our YouTube live comment section, we appreciate you. We see you, and uh, we want to bring you here uh, to Eagle 8 HD. So it's going to be a silent feed here. It's going to be a silent feed, but you'll be able to watch here and, and just uh, maybe maybe appreciate just how vast and large this area is that they have been searching now uh, for really uh, nearly a month here uh, at the Carlton Reserve and near uh, Mayaka Hatchie, near Mayaka River uh, State Park here in the vast wilderness of this very rural area, dense swampy area of Sarasota County, Florida. So let's go here live here for you folks. I'm hopping right now on my WFLA JB Instagram account, but let's keep this up here, the silent feed here up with you live if there's any updates we come back here live for you on wfla now
JB Buna here with you live on WFLA Now. We're going to be switching over now to the house, the house of Brian Laundry's family. So switching over here, everybody, to Northport, Florida.